Good morning everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Today on the kitchen table we have a product review. Um, now this was, um, this was kind of sent to me um, unsolicited, if you like, um, by a, a company called UA Vision in the UK. Um, uh, they also sent with it the On the Kitchen Table with Simon Newton mug, fully branded which is quite good. I quite like that. But uh, uh, today's beverage of choice is purely water. I'm very thirsty. Uh, cheers. Water in a mug. Why not? So that was very good from UA Vision. Thank you very much, guys. But um, what was really nice about their approach was that um, they said, look, we have decided to stock these because we think they're really useful. Um, here's one. Do what you like. We're not expecting a review. Have a look at it. Play with it. Do You know, no strings attached. No, no nothing. Um, obviously, they kind of sweetened the deal with the mug. That's very cool. Thank you very much. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I did try this. Um, and it's quite interesting. I think this might suit some people out there. So what is it? Well, the idea is that it will find lost stuff. We've all seen those little key fobs that you can put on your bunch of keys and you press a button and it beeps and you listen out for the beep and you go and find it. That's great. Pretty rubbish if, um, if you've got a, one of these that goes down you know, several hundred feet away. Um, so the way it works, though, that makes this a bit different is, and let's have a look. I'm not going to do unboxing, but what you get is you get two of these little tags in the kit, which you can link. I think you can link up to four. So you get two of these tags, and they are, they're very tiny. I mean, you know, into scale, um, and they weigh well, the weight of the battery, really, that's in those two two little cell bat little button cell batteries in there. That's that's kind of all all the weight is. Um, and there's nothing on them. That's you know, there's a little speaker and a flashy light. And that's it. And then you get two of those. Uh, also included is some instructions in a variety of languages. You get some little uh, little kind of lanyard things if you want to attach them to find keys or pets or people or whatever. Um, and a kind of magnetic, uh, a magnetic sticker for the, um, to sort of hang up this receiver unit, a little label so you can label, you know, one is my Phantom, one is my 450, one is my Hubsun, whatever. And uh, also quite nice in there, I wondered what they were, these are, these are sort of transparent double-sided sticky pads, so that would be perfect, they've been sized to, to fit the back here, that can go, you know, anywhere really, underneath, uh, it'll even fit um, something smaller. And um, it comes with, oh hello, I've switched it on by mistake, it comes with um, this really, I mean this is very thin, it looks like a smartphone advert doesn't it, um, this thing here. Now what makes this one a bit different is that it is directional. It kind of reminds me of, do you remember those old wildlife documentaries where, you know, there'd be some guy tracking down sort of lions with neck collars and he'd have a massive uh, kind of antenna and he'd be sweeping it around the plains and then when, when it went to points in the right direction it starts to beep louder. This is how this works, which I think makes it quite interesting for, for use in multi-rotors. So the whole point of this, and UA Vision were really up front, they said, look, this is not a flyaway kind of thing. If your aircraft's gone over the horizon miles, forget it. What this is aimed at is for people who want the peace of mind that if their aircraft comes down and they know where it's come down, you know, you've had a pilot error or you've had power failure and it's come down in some scrub or a big crop field or in some dense woodland and you know it's kind of over in that direction and within, you know, a reasonable range, you can use this to find it because, as I say, it is directional. How does it work? It's going to make a noise when I do this. So this has been programmed onto button number one. So you press and hold button number one. Switch it on first, Simon. It switched itself off. Press and hold button number one. Let go. That will then make contact with this. That then gets activated. Let's put that out of the way. Hear that? That then chirps and has a red light. And this thing here has a directional... A directional thing and it obviously tells you the closer you get and we need to stop that and then that deactivates that 
Now I thought that could be pretty interesting, but uh, on the packet it says plain line of sight, uh, 400 feet, and I thought, ugh, it's not that useful really, is it? Um, but, you know, the concept of having a directional find, I think, is a really, really good one. Um, if you don't want to go down the route of having a GPS tracker on your aircraft, uh, the expense, uh, the ongoing cost, I mean, obviously, that you've got ones like the Flytrex Live, which doesn't have an ongoing cost, but is a big upfront cost. Other trackers, there's, there's a weight penalty as well. You know, they're the ones that are going to find your aircraft wherever it is. But if you have a concern that you fly maybe a Phantom or maybe something a bit smaller, maybe a smaller class one, which is a bit further in and you don't tend to go beyond line of sight, maybe you stick within a thousand feet or so and it goes down and you know roughly what sort of quadrant of the, uh, of the compass it's gone down in, you can walk along and what will happen is this will activate once it becomes in range. So I thought, well, let's actually go and do a test of this. I wasn't going to strap it onto a, a, an aircraft, but Tom and I and Rosie were off into town, and we have a, a, a handy park on the way. So we took this in and another little flying device, and we did a test um, to test both how easy it was to locate something and the range. So let's have a look at that now. So here we go. We're going to do a true test with park cam here. Tom is going to... Um manually crash the WL Toys Nano uh, with the tag attached. Now to make it sort of a real world scenario rather than just hiding it anywhere in the whole park we're going to choose a sort of a quadrant and I'm going to say he's going to crash it somewhere in sort of that arc there which would kind of be similar if you lost a bit of control and you knew it was somewhere but not exactly. Um, so we're going to uh, he's going to cycle off and uh, go and hide that somewhere cunning and then um, give me a wave and then we'll see if we can track it. So there he goes and now just to be fair I'm going to turn around. I'm going to stare at these delightful municipal railings for a bit. So Tom returns and he's going to come with us but not give us any clues okay Tom? Okay. And we are going to we are going to walk over. So the first thing we need to do is switch it on. And we're going to press number one because it's actually number one that we've hidden. So let's press that and then we'll wait to see. Once this, once this light flashes, just hold it for a second for a while. We'll see if it picks it up. If not, we'll have to move a bit closer. Okay, so we're going to start moving. Oh, oh, we've picked something up. So I'm going to do an art. Stronger over this way. So uh, somewhere to the right. he's chosen somewhere to the right of our arc, I think. Oh. Keep checking. Definitely up this way. Just showing you what happens now directionally. So we're pointing off, and then if we get closer, <coughs> oh. pitch change. And then this direction. Mmm. Let's carry on. Okay, here we go. Getting closer now. Again. Move away. Now I can hear a cheep. I can hear a cheeping sound. So we're going to press the button and start tracking again because it's uh, timed out. I can hear a beeping sound from the tag. Let's get a bit closer. Okay, so we're very close. I can hear it chirping somewhere to my right. And there it is. Flashing and beeping away. So I'd say that was a fairly successful test. So there we are. Um, before we did the, the actual hunt, the uh, hunt the nano quad game, um, uh, we tested the range. Uh, so this was in a, uh, a park in a, you know, suburban environment. Um, and I thought, well, let, you know, we've got some trees uh, around and some buildings, but I had a clear line of where Tom was standing with the tag on the other side of the park. And I walked all the way to the other side and then I sort of walked forwards until he waved frantically at me to say, it's beeping. Um, and we got, I measured it with Google Earth, 760 feet, 
which is quite impressive and, you know, getting on for double what they claim as the minimum uh, on clear line of sight. Now, obviously, if you're in a dense woodland or lots of, you know, lots of foliage and it's wet, all those sorts of things that absorb radio frequencies and bits and pieces, you're going to probably get less. But, you know, on a, in a, in a kind of a, uh, an average environment with clear line, um, to get 770 feet out of it was very impressive. And, of course, the beauty about this system is that as you walk forwards, you can keep going and it will, it will, it's kind of working in a, in an arc, in a, there'll be a, a radius around it of that, potentially up to that distance. So I thought the test was quite successful. You saw the um, you saw the uh, the approach. We didn't cheat. I did turn my back and everything else, and I didn't see where he was going. But you saw how you know just stopping every now and again and doing a sweep around just gives you a uh, gives you more of a, a, a target to aim for. And you know, I thought that was really quite good. Um, the beeping wasn't excessively loud on the tag, um, but you started to hear it as you approached it, um, and that was always helpful as well. So, you know, you know you're in the right direction and you can get down to the sort of the actual spot. But this will get you within a couple of feet. Um, and the direction thing is brilliant because if you've gone into a tree, you know, rather than just saying it's here. No, it's not. Of course, you can use that direction finding to tilt things up and, and kind of see where it is. Couple with the beat. So we thought, um, so, yeah, we thought there's a, there's a use for this. And the specific use for this would be, I think, people a bit like me who don't fly beyond line of sight, who are using their quads to take aerial photos. We're not kind of doing dashing away. Um, and we, uh, we want something that if we have a problem, uh, either through our own incompetence or because of a mechanical or, or other failure, and it you know, goes down, maybe it auto lands. Maybe you've managed the battery a bit poorly and it auto lands somewhere. Uh, that's a bit dodgy scrubland or forest or, you know, just... Somewhere where you can't see it, tall grass, and this will take you straight there. Uh, five grams, the tags weigh, five grams, so just only a, a couple of seconds off your flight time for that penalty. And it will fit a pretty small quad. I mean, you could put that on a Hubsan X4. If you tend to take your Hubsan X4 uh, for little uh, uh, journeys around your neighbourhood, which I know some people do, um, carry this, no problem, which is interesting. So yes, it's called the Locator Light. In the UK, um, it's being sold by uavision.co.uk. They are also Flytrex dealers for the UK and a DJI Tier 2, hence the, uh, hence the logos on the mug. They've got it listed at £44.99 on their website at the moment. Um, I think if you've got a particular use case for this, that's a good, that might be a good little bit of insurance for you. Um, uh, I'm, whilst I'm sure they would be happy to fulfil your order from wherever in the world you are, they're not the only sort of stockist of this. So if you live somewhere not in the UK, perhaps uh, quick have a Google around to see who else is selling it. Uh, but but you know, five, six, seven hundred feet range automatically activates when you come within range. So if you if you if you've got a thousand foot, you've lost your Phantom a thousand feet away, and you know roughly the sort of you know, the, the the point in the compass to aim at, you could use this. Um, yeah, quite impressed with that. I think for the price, I think that could be, uh, for some people, that could hit the sweet spot who don't want to spend a lot of money on a GPS-based solution uh, and have the weight penalty. Perhaps this is a halfway house. As I said, though, what this won't do is if your vision disappears over the horizon, um, this is not going to help you. You would need a GPS device on that. But then it's like all insurance, isn't it? How much you pay versus the risk you want to take. So there we are. That's the locator light from UAV Vision. And a mug, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the approach that they made to me, which was a, a genuinely sort of no strings attached, which actually made me more likely to, to want to actually pick it up and, and, and have, a, have, a, have a test of it. So there we go. Thank you very much for your time, guys. And we'll see you again soon back here on the kitchen table. Cheers.